Hello guys, Clyde here. And in today's video, we are sitting here staring down the barrel of a brand new account. Now this is a press account provided to me by Wargaming, which has a lot of doubloons on it. 250,000 doubloons. That's about a thousand US dollars worth of doubloons and no ships. Now this is a very, very interesting and rare opportunity for me as a content creator to be able to play with an account that has a lot of money on it and no ships because right now with the Santa crates here, we're seeing a lot of unboxing videos, a lot of unboxing videos provided by players that already have like lots and lots and lots of ships. And so when they pull the, the ships out of Santa crates, they're getting a lot of really rare ships. And that has the ability or the, the tendency, I think, to make players look at that and go, wow, I can get a great rare ship too. And while that's possible for players who don't have much by way of ships, it's not likely, right? We know that the odds of getting a tier five, six or seven ship is much, 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 much higher, vastly higher than getting a Smallend or a Kamikaze or a Julia Cesare or a Gremiashi or I'm, I'm thinking of all the tier fives for some reason, but, but any of these really high tier uh, rare ships that come in that rare ships category, Thunderer, for example. And so what if you're a brand new player? You know, we're seeing a lot of players who've been playing for several years. In fact, I bought $300 worth of boxes this year. I got a lot of ships out of there that were high tier because I have almost all of the tier fives through sevens. I got a couple out of the boxes, but because I have all of those, it kind of gives a false sense of the, the wonderful prizes you can get. This account has nothing. Like, <laughs> look at this, it's got three ships here, uh, I guess to this side of me. I have exactly three ships. And if we go to the tech tree, um, we can see that that is true. Look at this, nothing in the German tech tree, nothing in the Russian tech tree, nothing in Pan-Asian, and nothing in American. And I can assure you this trend continues through all of the trees because I have just, I keep pointing the wrong direction, three ships. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars worth of dubs, 250,000 doubloons on Santa's mega crates. Those are the crates that are most likely to get you ships. And if you wanna know more about how that works, I've made a, a couple of videos, one last year and one this year about that. And I'll put links to them around so you can see them. And I'm not gonna subject you to watching me open all of the boxes one by one. I'm gonna open them in 20 packs and then I'll just put screenshots up here. Maybe I'll set it to some music or something. Um, and then when we're done, I'll put some graphs and some data that let us interpret what happens as you open crates over and over and over again. Honestly, I kind of wish I had about $2,000 worth of dubs because I think it might take more than 250,000 dubs to uh, be able to demonstrate some of the stuff that I'm looking at, but we'll see what goes on. If you're a brand new player with nothing, zero premium ships, what happens if you spend a thousand dubs over the course of the action of spending that thousand doubloons? 24 hours later. Okay, so I just got back from buying and opening all of the Santa boxes that I possibly could with a thousand dollars worth of doubloons on this press account that previously just had three tier one ships on it. Now I purchased the boxes in batches of 20, which cost about 75 US dollars a piece. And then I would open up each uh, each like set of 20 boxes um, and see what was in there and then record the results. All told, I received 59 premium ships and a bunch of other prizes. And I'll put a table right up above my head here that shows all of the things that we got. So unless this is the first video you have ever watched about World of Warships, Santa crates and whaling, then you probably already knew what it was that you could expect here. I got a lot of tier five through tier seven ships and then some random prizes like economic bonuses or credits, doubloons, premium time, what have you. I still think this is an interesting case study because it kind of tells you what happens when a player that doesn't have very many premiums, maybe they're a newer player or somebody who doesn't play very frequently. It, it tells what happens when that kind of player wails into Santa boxes. Yes, the results of this case study are predictable, but even so, I think that providing some visualizations and graphs that kind of demonstrate this data will prove to be somewhat interesting. Santa crates are an awesome deal for players who are interested in getting a good value on many things from World of Warships, but they don't really care about what those many things are. If you're one of these World of Warships omnivores, then you probably like playing all of the tiers or, or at least all the tiers from like tier five all the way up to tier 10. And you probably like playing all or most all of the classes in World of Warships as well. Perhaps submarines notwithstanding, because that's probably the last class that most groups will adopt um, as we kind of get used to them coming into the game. Santa crates are the best value for this type of player, but maybe you're the kind of player who only plays a single class. You're, you're an extreme DD main or something, or maybe you only play top tier. That imposes some restrictions on the prizes that you find valuable. 
those restrictions are going to reduce the value proposition of buying a bunch of Santa crates because there's a bunch of prizes in there that are just things you don't want. And that, of course, means that those are non prizes. They're they're drops that don't give you anything that improves your life or your experience when you play games. For example, maybe you're a player who just refuses to play down at tier five. That's fine. But it means that if you get an Asian court, that is a worthless prize for you. Another player who likes playing at tier five and likes playing battleships might think that that's an excellent prize because it's a fun ship at a fun tier. Maybe you refuse to play aircraft carriers. They're just not your style. You're not good at them, whatever. Whatever your reasons, if you don't play carriers, there are many, many, many aircraft carriers that can drop from Santa boxes. And if you get one of those, it's gonna feel like, again, a non-prize. Whereas another player might be really stoked to get an Aquila out of there, the new Italian aircraft carrier. Now, all of this is really just saying that players who are World of Warships omnivores, to use that silly term again, are going to find more value out of opening a bunch of Santa crates than a player who has more narrower focused interests. And now there's nothing, nothing, there is nothing wrong with knowing what your favorite parts of World of Warships are and playing those parts. People are class mains for a reason. It's because they found something that they really enjoy doing and you should do the things that are fun. This is a video game after all but it does mean that buying a bunch of Santa crates are gonna potentially be more disappointing to you than a player who's like, oh cool, I got anything, and they're totally happy about it. So think about that before you spend a big stack of cash, or perhaps for some of you before you spend another big stack of cash on Santa boxes. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the data. We love looking at data here on Clyde Plays, and uh, hopefully you do too. If it's your first time here, this is a pretty nerdy channel, welcome. Um, so first of all, I want to say that I have created a Google spreadsheet where I recorded all this information and I'll put a link to it down in the description of this video. So if you want to go look at that uh, more closely, you can. There will be some other tables and calculations and stuff there too. Um, most of the important stuff is here in this video, but if you want to go look at it, I'll provide that there for transparency. Also for transparency, I did record myself opening up all of the boxes. Um, and kind of commenting or musing as we did. Uh, that video is uploaded to YouTube, but I made it an unlisted video so that it doesn't just flood people's subscription feeds because it is completely raw, completely unedited. It is a, just a video of a guy opening boxes and being bemused by their interesting contents. I find that kind of content boring and I didn't want to make it go out to everybody who's a subscriber. But if you want to watch that because you, you're into that kind of thing, that's fantastic. Um, and you can just click the link in this video's description and watch it from there. Um, I'm also providing that as objective quality evidence, right? These are the real drops that I actually got um, and they are, they're provided there, as I said earlier, as transparency. So if anybody's like, I don't believe this, you can go watch that video and see what we dropped. For the rest of this video, we're gonna talk about two things, basically the ships that dropped out of the containers that I opened and then the dollar value of the items, including ships that dropped out of the containers that I opened. We will be using US dollars for all of this. So I apologize for anybody who has to do mental conversions. I didn't want you to have to do those gymnastics, but um, I'm not gonna do every currency in the world. <laughs> and this is such a global game, it's tricky. Um, anyway, so let me put up a list on the screen of all of the possible ships that we can get out of Santa Crates. And as you can see, any of the items that are highlighted in green are ships that actually dropped when I opened my boxes. So you can see that we got a lot of tier five through tier seven ships, and that makes a lot of sense. Those ships have a 12% chance of dropping, uh, or rather that list has a 12% chance of being a drop, and then it just chooses an item randomly from that list of ships. The tier eight and nine ships, it's a 3% chance to drop an item from that list, and the rare or tier 10 ship list is a 1% chance. So if you look at the ratio of ships that we got, it's actually not totally unreasonable there. Unfortunately, what we can see here is that $1,000 worth of doubloons was not enough to clear off every item from the tier five through tier seven list, at least in this one instance, this one case study. Based on the math we did on the other Santa Crate video, it looks like it would take about another $500 or so to finish off the rest of the tier five through seven list for this account. And once that happens, it would force the random roll algorithm to start giving us items off of the tier eight, nine list or the tier 10 slash rare ships list. So let's think about this for just one second, okay? So what I just told you is that a player who has zero or let's say very, very few premium ships would have to spend about $1,500 to clear the board of the tier five through seven list so that they could force the algorithm to give them consistent drops on the tier eight, nine list or the tier 10 slash rare ships list. So if you've got a friend who just started playing World of Warships and they're like, dude, I'm gonna blow so much money buying crates that I get guaranteed to get a Musashi. I'm gonna spend $200. 
you can tell them that that is just not realistic. That is not going to happen. And they'll be like, whoa, maybe I should spend $500. You can tell them that's not enough either. Um, the, the player, your friend, your imaginary friend in this scenario, they are going to get an incredible value for that investment, whether it's $200 or $500. Um, but it will not likely lead to the singular ship of their dreams. It is very, very unlikely to get that singular dream ship unless you've already cleared the board of all of the tier five through seven ships that kind of stand in your way and gobble up all of your ship drops. Now, of course, we're going to see people post on Reddit and on the forums and on Twitter and talk about it on Twitch where they got one free box just for logging in. Wargaming gave me a box and I opened it and it had Julio Cesari in it. But what we never know in those scenarios is how many premiums that player already had. Yeah, and sometimes they'll tell us, which is great. But if that player had every other ship on all of the lists, they had a 16% chance of dropping that Julius Cesari, not a 1% chance like a player who still has ships available to get in those other lists. So we got to bear that in mind when we see those posts. This is not normal and the odds are not good. Now, that doesn't mean, as I've said a couple of times, that you're not going to get a good value when you open that box. You will, but you might not get a Julius Cesari. When I was opening the boxes, I noticed that I got four rare or tier 10 ships, which at the time felt like a lot of ships. It felt like a higher drop rate than normal, uh, but I counted up the number of boxes that I opened, which was 312 megas, which have a 1% chance of dropping a rare or tier 10 ship. So actually four is pretty close. It's only one more ship than I would expect. I got seven ships from the tier eight or nine list, which is actually a little bit light. If you have a 3% chance of getting eight or a nine, I should have gotten about nine ships and I got seven. So, you know, we didn't do amazing with the eight nines, but we did a little better with the rares. Opinions, of course, will vary on these ships and whether or not the specific drops that I got are any good. Uh, but really, for the purpose of this experiment, the idea that we broke into those lists and we got these numbers of ships is kind of what's more interesting. Um, looking at the rares, though, you know, three of those ships are unavailable, which is cool. Um, and one of them is uh, available for Cole, the Yoshino. I also like three of those ships. I'll let you guess in the comments which one of those four I don't like very much. How about a pie chart? Uh, this one here shows the vast majority of the ships are from tier five through seven with a small number in the rarer categories. Just because. Because everybody loves a pie chart. So here's another neat chart. This basically shows the progress towards having 100% of the ships in each of the given lists, the, the five through seven list, the eight, nine list, or the 10 and rares list. So as you can see, we're making steady progress on the blue line as the tier five through sevens go all the way up. We stopped just north of 60% of all the tier fives and sevens. And if we'd had another thousand dollars of fake doubloons on my phony press account, uh, we could have seen that line eventually flatten out as we achieved 100% of the tier five through sevens. When that happens, any drop that would have been a five or a seven would go to the eight nines or the rares and we'd start to see those lines increase in frequency as well we'd probably max out the eight nines next and so it would reach 100 percent and flatten out and then the yellow line would start an aggressive upward trend as well so you know this would have been a much more interesting chart if i'd have had about twice as many doubloons maybe maybe $2,000 in doubloons or $2,500 in doubloons would have done this a lot more justice but you can certainly see that the the uh, rate of getting ships is better for the lower tiers. Again, this is unsurprising news, but it just would have been really cool to have the the full spectrum warrior of, of charts here <laughs> if we could have had it. Um, but unfortunately, we just didn't have enough phony doubloons. Next, let's switch gears and talk about the value of the contents of the Santa boxes that I purchased. So ship values are probably the easiest to calculate. You just go to the premium shop, figure out how much the ship costs and write it down. Sounds easy enough. Here is a list of all of the ships that dropped out of my Santa crates and their prices. For any ship that's listed as cost estimated, that's because that ship is not available for purchase in the premium shop. And so what I've done is I've substituted the price of a ship of the same class and tier. As you can see, the total value of all these ships is about $2,000. Now, this assumes that you never use any coupons, you never look for a good deal, you don't use your World Warships birthday coupon, and you just pay full price for everything. However, I think it's a pretty good way to kind of measure how much we got in terms of ships. Now, some of you may have observed that these ships, or at least some of them, I should say, are coal ships, and coal ships are free. So I also totaled up the number of dollars of value minus the cost of the coal ships, because you could just unlock those by playing the game. Um, and it's still around $1,600, which again, is a pretty good value for that World of Warships omnivore player we were talking about earlier. 
This bar chart shows the value of the ships that were dropped from each batch of 20 mega boxes, with the exception of the bar labeled 16 and 17. Um, that one represents a batch of about 12 megas and a few random gift boxes because I was starting to run out of doubloons there at the end. Uh, but essentially, each bar represents an investment of $75 worth of mega boxes, and then the value of the ships that dropped out of those boxes. So any bar that is higher than $75, you could argue, was a good investment. Any bar that was lower was maybe not so good investment. Now, this is ships only, of course, and there are other goodies and prizes that come out of Santa boxes that are not included in this measurement. We're going to talk about those here in a future chart, but when you take a look at this from just purely a ship's perspective, you can see that often we do better than that $75 investment when it comes to just the flat premium shop value of the ships. So we don't do too poorly there. Again, better deal for players who are less picky about the ships they get. Not so good of a deal about players who want something specific or who place restrictions on what they choose to play in World of Warships, right? Those folks with a very narrow focus on their favorite things are gonna find less value in the smorgasbord of random boats that you can get from Santa boxes. This table is comprised of rows that represent batches of 20 mega crates, again, with the exception of the row labeled 16 and 17, which is about 12 mega crates and a few random gift boxes. Um, in each row, we try to estimate in US dollars the value of the items that were dropped. I created some in-game currency to US dollar conversions uh, using the pricing from the premium shop to help generate these estimates. So they're not based on nothing, um, but there probably is a little bit of wiggle room in there. So, you know, give me a little leeway there and use your own best judgment to determine whether or not you think these things are worth what the premium shop charges, because that also could be a... Uh, point of contention. <laughs> I did not include estimates for economic bonuses, camos, elite commander XP, things like that, because I didn't find an agreeable enough math formula to adapt those to US dollars easily, in my opinion. Yes, I know we could have sold camos for credits and used the credit conversion, but I just felt like too many hoops that was probably introducing too much error, frankly. Um, as a result, though, those items are not included on this table and they do have value. So you're just going to have to use your own judgment there to determine how much you think they're worth to you and then adjust that information. When we take a look at the cumulative value column, which lists the total value for uh, the, the row that is that batch and then all of the previous batches as well. <laughs> That's a terrible explanation of the cumulative value column, but I think you guys know what the word cumulative means and you can figure it out. So I'm just gonna move on and not reshoot that. So if we take a look at the bottom of the cumulative value column that I explained so poorly, uh, we can see that the total value of everything that we got out of all of the boxes that we opened was about $2,553. That was for an $1,182 investment. Now, technically, I got $182 worth of doubloons, which I immediately reinvested into more boxes. So we should subtract $182 from the cumulative value column, which leaves us with $2,371 in total net value. That is a lot. That's like doubling the money that we invested. It's like a 50% off coupon. It's like Santa boxes and the birthday coupon both offer a 50% discount. The difference is the birthday coupon, you get to pick what you're buying, right? And by the way, you should just buy doubloons with it because then you can make multiple choices. But that's a topic for another discussion. But you don't get to pick anything when you buy Santa crates. You just get a really good deal on whatever comes out of the random number generator. If you're a World of Warships omnivore, that's not crazy. Are you the kind of player who wants to get a steep discount on a bunch of random stuff from World of Warships? Well, in that case, Santa crates might just be for you. Or are you a more discerning customer? You're willing to pay more for the same things that those guys got for cheaper, but you're gonna spend less money overall because you're just gonna get the stuff that you want. If that's you, Santa crates are probably not the best way to go. Maybe use your birthday coupon wisely and ignore Santa crates when it rolls around because you're a different kind of player. You're not an omnivore. You have a refined palate. You have a, a flavor that you're going for. You have a specific thing you're trying to do. Whereas other people are just wailing in, in random directions. Now I started off as the more discerning type of player. And these days I'm more of a whale that just buys everything or, or whatever. Uh, both ways are good. I was happy as a World of Warships player in both ways, and you can be too, but there is a type of player where Santa boxes make more sense. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Honestly, I don't even really know what to make of this information. I feel like it's some stuff 
that we got to talk about, but this weird empty account with a thousand dollars worth of doubloons that Wargaming gave me as a press uh, account was just such an interesting opportunity. I had to make something out of it, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I am fairly sure that nobody else made this kind of video when they got that press account. If they did, let me know, because I'd love to see someone else's analysis and maybe share some ideas. If you are a World of Warships omnivore, get down into the comments and tell me you're an omnom omnivore. And if you are maybe, maybe a different kind of player, you're a different sort of whale, just straining krill through the baleen plates dangling from your mouth. I don't know what baleen really looks like. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know. Maybe you're a more discerning player. You only play tier 10. Maybe you're becoming a super ship main. I don't know. Let me know how you approach buying Santa boxes or if you just ignore them altogether and why. I'd love to have your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate that. I hope you'll take care of each other. Be cool, be nice, and we'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye. But enough about ships. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. <laughs> Oh, that is not true.